Yeah. Right, so I'm gonna have creatine and BCAs. What are you having? So I'm having creatine, I'm having citrus money, just to improve the pump. And in my intra workout, I'm having some glucose drink with BCAs as well inside. Do you take any caffeine? Caffeine? Yeah, no. Oh, too, or too close to bed? Uh, no, I try to avoid this close to bed time, but. I usually take a pre-workout, not tonight, because then it goes to bed, so I'm just going to depend on my energy levels, really, see how it goes. Yeah. 10 grams of BCAs? Uh, I'll go for 20. 20? Just because of the size of the, of the top you're having. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. So it's basically like 5 grams for every 500 minutes. Yeah. So. Do you take uh, creatine, like, every day? Oh, you don't take creatine, you do? Yeah, I do. But let's say if you miss a day, right? So yesterday I'd actually no creatine. You do you do. like freak out or? No, it's fine. So basically the most important thing is that you don't freak out about anything. If you forget the supplement, you forget the supplement, you don't have it, you don't have it. I mean, at the end of the day, a lot, a lot of these stuff sometimes act as placebos, next to being like, yeah. you work on ingredients. So without them, you're not going to die. You yeah. say I've got lots in your body that's gonna get you through. Your creatine is being generated inside your body anyway, a smaller amount, but still there. You might need the BCAs because it does like directs all the proper nutrients to your muscle directly while you're working out, improve your endurance level, improve your muscle repair so quick. But at the end of the day, again, you can have an amazing session about any of this stuff. So yeah. it's, just, it's just an aiding mechanism for you. Yeah, so basically supplements is not a requirement. It's a small percentage of your actual overall training and nutrition as well. But um, it's nice to get ideas from other people as well, what they're taking and how it's helping their body. How many was that? 17. 17. Then you're super setting with dips, okay. Are you doing chest it? Yeah. How many dips are you going for? Ten. Easy. Seven, keep going. Nine, huh? More. Up, up, up. Strong. Easy.
Okay, so basically we just done 50 pull-ups and then we done like 40 dips to warm up the chest and back. Now we're going into some incline bench and then also we're going to go into some dumb barbell rows. Um, Ahmed got it pretty solid in like four sets, whereas it took me a lot more sets to get the pull-ups done. I'm already very fatigued, so this will be fun. So how many sets are we going for? Where? Of the incline? Uh, four to five. Four so to five, four five of reps. Six sets. Hmm? Many reps? Uh, roughly between eight and twelve. Roughly right. between eight and twelve, but we can maximize the strength a little bit. So it's fine if we drop to six. Yeah. But for the back, for the bent over rows, don't mean to get always a... main, mainly aim for like eight at least. Don't mean to try and get like a different barbell instead of us changing the weight. Uh, oh, depends on how you go. How heavy are you going? I go two plates and a tenner maybe. So I roughly 235 pounds in total. Are we doing Smith Machine incline? Two plates. But we are doing Smith Machine? Yeah. Right, okay. So two plates here, two plates down. Super set, non stop. Yeah, super set. So basically, a super set just means that there's no rest in between sets. But we're resting after a first set. Yeah, so, so, so it's basically my rest is when you're working out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your rest is when you're working out, that's it. Perfect. Is this just a warm up? Yeah. Why are you warming up? Because it, it helps to get the blood flow, pump up to your muscle, prepare your muscles for the, work, for the workout, helps like, alleviate the risk of injuries, get your heart rate up and running. So basically, you're getting into the mood of being great. Pump the shit up! <laughs> So basically you want to warm up, are you warming up after, before every single work, uh, exercise or are you just warm up? So the way I like to do it is that uh, when I keep on switching from one exercise to the next one, yeah. I tend to like sort of deload, so I use like a lighter weight just for me to get the form in, so that, they, that my mind like... Before every exercise? Yeah, just my mind so that it oh. like, disconnects from the first yeah, one to yeah, the yeah, next yeah. because sometimes my body feels confused, not everyone is like that. Okay. It's not like a warm up, so for example, let's say if I bench for 80, yeah. I maybe stop by 60. Not like 20 or 30, I'm not even for high reps. Yeah, yeah. Just 1 to 15, just feel comfortable, and then I start counting my reps in. Yeah, because I'm the same. Well, all I would do is just warm up for the first exercise. Like, so if I'm doing bench, I'd warm up bench, and I wouldn't warm up for incline dumbbells or anything. I'm just kind of okay. warmed up for the first chest. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. It depends on how your body feels comfortable. So I don't do it with every exercise, but there are some movements that I feel like, oh, I need to tell my brain I'm actually moving from incline to flat, for example. So yeah, yeah. The pressing movements. But if we do back, for example, I don't have to do the, the warm up. I just bang in my, my heavy weight as soon as I keep on changing exercises because I feel comfortable doing them. Pressing movements are not the same for me. Some okay. people are different, so I'm more of a pulling guy. Some okay. people are more of a pushing. Yeah, I'm definitely a person, push. So, yeah. yeah, cool.
Oh, what was I doing wrong? Huh? <laughs> My back is fucked. <laughs> what was wrong? My no, feet? There, there's nothing. There's nothing actually particularly wrong in general. So basically, when you do bent over rows, some people prefer to stand. Like, let's say, for example, wider stance. So basically, you're, you're improving or widening up your base support. Yeah. But it makes it a little bit harder when you're going down. So basically, you're not doing like a single deadlift or anything. So. Other, other people would be sort of too narrow. Your base support is too, too small, so basically you are challenging your balance a little bit. So what, the best way I find is that you, chan you stand somehow like hip width apart. Yeah. So this gives you the most control over your body, over your weight. So every time you want to lift. Oops. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> my bad. I didn't have the weight the other side. You have to check. So, lift. You always have this control that you can actually go up, go down. You can only hinge from your hip yeah. and you can do whatever movement you want. It's different than hip, you have a wide base of support. You're a little bit more challenging your, your legs, particularly your quads. Yeah, which, so you want to... takes a little bit away from the human exercise so that your back tends to compensate. Yeah, so basically you want a narrow stance. A lot more range of motion. Yeah, exactly. When you have a narrow stance. So yeah. try and keep your feet, show them in narrow. So you want your feet narrow rather than out wide. My first set I went wide, my recent set I went narrow and got a lot more reps, a lot better form. So I'll video the next set for you so you can see the difference. So basically the takeaway, the takeaway of this one is if you stand hip width apart, yeah. you're basically having more control on your body yeah. and you're teaching your body that you're actually looking at your back. Other than working out, depending on your class, so your back becomes the secondary muscle you want to become the primary muscle in this moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. Show you what I'm wearing actually. My protein. Always. Discounts are usually down in the description box. Okay, so this is Ahmed's first working set. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Notice that he's back in a good angle. He's rolling to his belly button. Easy. Ah, strong. You can see his performance now is way better than the previous set. His back is straight, he's going properly underneath his rib cage. There is a little bit of movement from his hip, which is perfectly acceptable because it gives him a little bit more range of motion when he goes back to a squeeze. As long as it's controlled, straight back, it's super tough. So we just finished up the incline bench and also the barbell row. Four sets of each, we done eight to 12 reps on each. Ahmed went heavier every single set, didn't you? Yeah, except the last two sets. Yeah, so yes. I basically just stuck at a oh, hundred pounds on the Smith machine for the incline and then stuck at 80 pounds for the barbell row. And um, those two movements are actually in my program, so it actually suited me to do this. What is not in my program is what we're gonna do behind us, which is gonna be some So much fun. <laughs> so much fun, yeah. Dumbbell press, dump your dumbbell, dumbbell. Fucking dumbbell chest press on the foam, foam roller. roller. Many sets? Four sets. Four sets. Four super sets, yeah. Super sets, so like you explained, super sets are basically just no rest in between. And we're also going to be doing rows. Not right, sir? Rows. It, rows? One, one no, arm? No, uh, flies, heel flies. So this is like a pure chest chest. Oh, okay. So you're doing two chest movements? You're yeah. super setting two chest movements? Yeah, yeah. So press, flies. Okay. Easy. 
Super. Yeah. Can be done anywhere. I place it in the Okay. Easy. Here you go. It's easy. This exercise is not based on power. It's basic purely strength. Focused on your pecs major. Yeah, we're going for 12. Nine. And at the same time, it's an amazing exercise if you want to integrate it with core as well. And so you're working on your balance. And switch arms. Again, it's a different type of focus on your pec major as well. So if any of you guys struggling a little bit to put some density on, you want to work on your lateral side of the chest. And it, uh, uh, actually, we might actually give you a little bit of a sneak peek on how your chest will look like if Shane will be happy to take off his shirt at some oh, point. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, looks like he will. So basically, we've done the exercise with the foam roller, four sets, and we superset that with the chest flies on the cables, but we've done a drop set at the end, which means you just keep dropping the weight, cut it by one plate, half a plate, as long as you keep dropping it and go to failure. So Ahmed has still got one more set of the push, and then he's gonna be doing his flies, and he'll probably do a drop set as well. So we're four exercises down, two chest, no, Three chest, one back movement. We also done 50 pull-ups and we done about 40 dips as well. So this is really new to me. I don't train like this. I'm just giving it a go because I'm Sesh it. Session is not over yet. Session is not over yet, he said. So if you're looking to build muscle, this is the type of training you need to be doing. Four sets, eight to 12 reps, pushing, tearing as many muscle fibers as possible. And then we'll also talk a little bit about nutrition at the end of the video, because that's obviously plays a big part in it. That's what a lot of people, young people message me on Snapchat, Instagram saying, how can I gain muscle but not gain fat or how can I gain pounds? So basically what Ahmed does, he trains very, very hard when he's in the gym, he's burning a lot of calories, which allows him to stay in the maintenance of calories, even a deficit, but his nutrition's on point. He's training like fucking very hard here. So that's just the difference. Train hard, have your nutrition on point, drop sets can come as well, so it helps you to burn calories, so it doesn't allow you to gain too much weight. He, this guy's always lean all year round, but he's always putting on muscle. What's the difference then in the, so what's the difference in this and this? So, the regular horizontal grip, yeah. it mainly targets your middle back. Middle back. So obviously the, the way you extend, you're extending your lap with it, but mainly with this piece you're targeting more on the middle back, so that's like the primary. Okay. The other grip, this one, simulates more like a three point row, or a single arm row, so if you're familiar with it. So it's more on the lat, the lat itself with a little bit of emphasis on the middle back depending on how much you squeeze. Okay. So because today we are having like a primary chest and a secondary the accessory of the backs. So like it's, called, it's not an accessory like having rows and stuff, but what I mean is that the primary focus on the chest. So we're doing everything related to upper back, middle and lower back. The last after different days, that's why the variation in the grip. That's why this grip is not okay. being carried out today. So basically this grip, you're going to be trying to focus on the upper back and kind of that width of the back at the top, whereas this is going to be for the lats and then kind of the V-shape. Yeah, this one here. Yeah, okay.
you go. Strong. Ah. Nice. 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 His bag gives very, very good depth on the horizontal layer. Yeah, so we have three more sets of that, and then that's us done. Just gonna have a wee chat about nutrition and off season muscle building. Fuck, it's 8 30 pm. Pretty drained right now, so I'll video him doing the sets. Eating some dates. If you don't know what dates are, Google it, they're amazing. Such good source of carbohydrates. Mm. So, this is probably the first video on my channel that I've kept extremely raw. No edits, hardly any music. Just me and Ahmed busting our ass, doing chest and back. Now, this video isn't specific for GA, it's specific for gaining muscle in the off season and gaining muscle during Christmas. I would only do this type of workout maybe once, once in a blue moon, once every two weeks, every, once every month. I train with someone that is as big as Ahmed and has as much muscle mass as Ahmed and then push my body and tear as much muscle fibers as I possibly can. So really enjoy the workout. It's pretty late now, it's coming up to 12 a.m. So we're gonna go home now, just take a protein shake straight into bed to try and up my protein especially after tearing so many muscle fibers today i'm definitely going to be feeling it tomorrow so i want to make sure my recovery is on track i already had my bcas during the workout so i don't need to touch that as well i was going to sit down with Ahmed and have a chat about nutrition and stuff but to be honest nutrition is very basic you need to be eating enough calories to allow you to have muscle growth i done an unbelievable video on this i'm going to put it down in the description box as well it's all about calories in calories out so me and Ahmed's actually not going to have a chat about nutrition because we basically talked about how many calories you're going to be burning within the actual session which it keeps him a uh, lean all year round while he's still having enough food without the day not right buddy Totally right. Yeah, yeah so, let's have a chat, bro. Yeah, no, we're not going to have a chat. No? No, because I just kind of explained them that it's all about calories. I think this video alone is trying to focus on chest and back build muscle. How we, well, not me, how Ahmed trains. He took the workout. I didn't take the workout. So, what are you drinking? What's that in your hand? That's my protein shake. Makes a little bit with the remaining BCAs from my session. Mm -hmm. So I try to aim like to finish roughly around two liters of water during my session. Okay. Roughly whatever's remaining, I just put in the shake instead of putting pure water, so having BCAs still there. There's some protein powder there. If you're not gonna eat afterwards directly, it's better, best to get like protein way isolate, yeah. which is a little bit expensive on your part, but at the end of the day, it helps you go a little bit this extra time without food for some time is good because it depends on your choice you can have like casein with it egg albumin there are lots of different choices on the market but yeah. at the end eat good sleep good stress levels down you'll be fine yeah at the end of the day train hard and you got to feel there four sets 12 reps we really tired the muscle especially in the last set of each we supersetted no rest in between our tempo ranges were explosive um, in all movements and then trying on the eccentric movement try to come down slow so Calories in, calories out, make sure you're having enough protein to allow muscle growth, tear enough fibers whenever you're training, make sure you're getting enough recovery. We're we both had BCAs during a workout and he's also had BCAs after his workout along with protein powder. So that just shows the benefits of protein. And if you're a young kid, 17, 18, 19, you struggle putting on muscle, you know, whenever you were growing up, were you struggling with protein no, muscle or so were you always a big guy? It took me five years until I started to use protein whey. I depend on four days to eat, eat, eat. So like there's no tomorrow. So I just finish the session, as you were saying, you just give it your maximum, you go home, you eat whatever is there. Obviously not whatever is there as in like bad carbs or anything, yeah, yeah. you just be a little bit cautious about what you choose, but then you keep on eating, eating, because your body anyways have the tendency to develop, keeps on going forward, forward, your curve keeps on going. And then until a certain point, 
maybe you can't lift anymore or maybe you're, stra you're, you're being stronger but you can't see any aesthetic differences out there so maybe there's a time where you need to start to add in more protein whether in your diet or starting to have protein shakes but I would recommend that people depend on food at the beginning get your body the chance to develop yourself naturally yeah, and yeah. to reach the maximum potential you have <clears throat> and then start spending your money and they save your money for something else go for a nice vacation exactly yeah. at the end of the day it's all calories in calories out make sure you're having enough calories throughout the day to help you grow muscle I'm out of here thank you very much Ahmed you're going to see him a lot on the channel over the next hey thanks guys anything just post question for Shane he's the best guy so far and I think for very 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 upcoming so many years I love this guy he's so good listen to his advice he's the best and I'll see you guys later Rice out of here, Ahmed out of here, see you. Subscribe, like, and tag everyone, and let's keep fucking growing. Bye.